championship tradition continues. Georgia Southern football with Mike Seawalk. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Huddle House Restaurants. Any meal, any time, 24 hours a day. Now, here's your host. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2002. I'm Brady Posk alongside Eagles head coach Mike Seawalk. And coach, we're here in Charleston, South Carolina this week taking on the Citadel. And it's uh, historically been a, a very challenging game for the Eagles a week after the App State game. Well, I think the Citadel is challenging for everybody. It's a military school and what happens is they get their mission, they come out here and they want to go ahead and give it their best effort. They uh, always fight right to the end. It's always played 60 minutes of good hard football. We've got a beautiful stadium. They're going to have a captive audience and uh, there'll be some people around here pulling for them to go ahead and give it their best shot and they will. I mean, they always have done a great job. It's going to be interesting this year because they got a fifth year senior transferring quarterback named Jeff Klein who's uh, going to add a spark to their offense and they've always been tough on defense. And coach, uh, as it gets later in the season, the team gets a little more banged up. Uh, what's what's the injury situation today? Well, uh, we might have, we have the opportunity to use Mike Ward in an emergency situation. He's he's ready to, I believe he's ready to go. He's gone through some stuff. He looks a lot better. Um, Freddie didn't make the trip this time. So we're going out here. It's the first time we've been on the road without Freddie. And, uh, he, um, be sorely missed, I'm sure, but uh, hopefully the young guys will come along again and realize that their backs are against the wall and they need to go ahead and produce. And hopefully uh, we can carry the momentum from our last four wins in a row over here into Charleston today. Absolutely. I, I don't know if any of that will happen. I think what happens is the first three minutes of this football game will be more of a momentum getter than anything else. All right, Coach, good luck today here against the Citadel. When we come back, we'll have first half highlights of Georgia Southern versus the Citadel, but first, it's the Coca-Cola play of the day. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the first half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Citadel. Coach, we received the kick first and uh, almost looked like a little bit of last week's game against App State once Ant got the ball in his hands there. Absolutely. I was surprised they kicked the ball to Ant anyways. And then when Ant took it, he did his thing. He burst up the sideline and got it out there. I believe it's about the 47, 48 yard line. Uh, it was good blocking on that side over there. And uh, Ant Williams, um, always capable of breaking it open. It wouldn't hurt my feelings to see him do that once again. Coach, uh, on our first possession, the pitch to Mark Myers is fumbled. Chaz recovers at the 47, puts us in a hole, and it forces us to punt. But Scott Shelton's nice punt is uh, downed at the actually one yard line, but they take over at the seven where it was first touched. Well, that was a good job by, uh, again, Jonathan Wilkerson. Uh, also, that play just before Chaz, I mean, we have a have a pretty good scheme going over there and I guess we pitch that ball on the ground that was disappointing. And then Citadel takes over on their first possession. They convert three big third downs, actually four big third downs, then on fourth and five they kick a 25 yard field goal to take a three nothing lead with 604 in the first. That, that was a little disappointing. They could drive that thing down there almost, uh, what was it, about a 20 yard, it was 30 yard field goal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 25 yard yeah, field goal. Yeah, so it was disappointing to see them drive it down there on our defense like that because I hoping they'd come out there and especially when we pinned them down in that situation. but. Uh, Great, you got to give a lot of credit to Citadel. They came out here as Warriors like they always do. I mean, we were preaching it to them, and our kids got to realize that you got to play everybody. And they held our offense to a three and out on our next possession. Citadel takes over again. Big play on first down from the 31, the reverse to Scooter Johnson for 15 yards. And uh, James Young actually made a nice save there for a touchdown. Absolutely. James played, played better for us today, maybe especially in the second half with the breakup on the pass from down there. Also, we had that chop block again in, the first, in that first, uh, first of the drive, the next start to the next series. So. Uh, penalties and uh, poor execution hurt the offense in the first half. And Citadel again, and they converting third downs and keeping us off the field and keeping the ball. That's a that's a critical situation for Georgia State. And the big play in the drive was on fourth fourth and three from the nine yard line. Jeff Klein, a nine yard touchdown pass, corner of the end zone, but they missed the extra point, so it's nine nothing Citadel there. Yeah, they they ran some guys in and they picked uh, well, rubbed us and just got back in the corner and our our corner fell down. And uh, at the end of the first quarter, Georgia Southern retakes possession. Third and 15, Chaz is sacked at the eight yard line and uh, offense really having trouble getting to anything going right early on. Again, ball on the ground on a fumble and also we had an illegal procedure. And Citadel takes over on their next possession on third and five, brought in a 44 yard touchdown run off the draw. They missed the extra point again, in it, but it's 15 nothing Citadel on top. Yeah, it didn't look good. And too many missed tackles. And then uh, when they came down the field, that brought when he got ahead of steam, he's going to make some people miss. He's a 
He's a heck of a warrior and a heck of a football player. Citadel up 15-0 with 12.56 left in the second quarter. Georgia Southern takes over in our next possession. Second and three, the pitch to Zream for 10 yards. That's That was our first first down of the game there in the second quarter. Well, when we're celebrating first downs in the second quarter, you know it's a bad day for Georgia Southern. I knew it was a bad day for Georgia Southern. And then next play, fumble to Z, the pitch. We recover, though, but we lose five yards. Then on third and seven, Chaz only able to pick up six and forces us to punt again. Absolutely. Uh, Citadel's next possession, second and nine, though. Georgia Southern takes it back. Joe Scott with the interception of Jeff Klein's pass at the 40-yard line, and that starts to get things going for us a little bit. Brady, that's what we need. We need some turnovers. We need the defense to come up there and start leading us. I mean, we need those guys to go ahead and get those turnovers. And when Joe picked that ball up, then it just kind of uh, rejuvenated our sideline. And naturally, we get the ball down in their situation. Our guys are feeling good about themselves. We hadn't executed well to this point. But uh, we put a little extra effort. We dug down deep and found a way. And on first down from the 23, Jermaine Austin, a nice nine-yard run. They would pick up the first down. Then next play, first down from the 13. Chaz takes off for a 13-yard touchdown. And that was big to get Georgia Southern back in the game now, 15-7. to seven. Absolutely. And, and the extra point. I mean, you can't take anything for granted in this football game. A uh, game like this when you know you're going to have to fight. And each point's a valuable point. And uh, Scott Shelton did in there and, uh, and nailed it. And Georgia Southern cuts the lead to eight with 7.03 left in the first half. Later, Citadel takes over, and on fourth and inches, they go for it and pick it up. Derek Butler then comes up with a big hit on Broughton, but the Citadel's still moving, and they're, they're sucking the life out of the clock, and on third and 12, AK Keys called for a big pass interference there. Uh, both hands were back behind him. I don't see which hand he could have put on the guy's back. Uh, I was disappointed in uh, some, you know, I didn't get, felt like the officiating sometimes wasn't in Georgia Southern's favor, but that's the way it goes sometimes when you're on the road. Uh, probably get in trouble for this, but uh, I didn't always see it the way they saw it, and that's just one of the key, that's just one of the keys. We have to do a better job amongst ourselves, making sure we don't put ourselves in a position to get penalties. And the defense comes up big, though, late in the drive with the time running out in the half. Big hit on Klein, the quarterback. That will eventually force a 31-yard uh, field goal to close out the scoring in the first half. Citadel up, though, 18-7 to at the half. That was a good defensive stand right there, and I'll tell you, that shot he took just before half, wouldn't wish that on anybody. He was a, he was a severe blow. He, he did a good job popping him, and then their kicker went on and did a good job drilling that, that field goal. Citadel pretty much dominated the first half time of possession and uh, scoring, but when we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus the Citadel here on Georgia Southern Football 2002. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the Ask Coach question. And Coach George Smith from Columbia, South Carolina asks, why do teams like the Citadel who consistently have losing seasons play Georgia Southern so difficult like they did once again today? Well, George, uh, a lot of times teams have a, they have a special feel for playing at home. There's no doubt when they play at home, they're a different football team. And of course, they played us tough last year. The military aspect has a little bit to do with it. I think there's a lot of coaches all over the country that have to, if you ask them the same question, they'd like to know that. And if you could write a book on it, you'd make millions on it. Uh, uh, kids come up there, they're 18, 19 year old kids, good things happen to them. They make some plays and all of a sudden they start to believe it's like any race. When you start running that race, if you're out ahead of those guys and they feel like they can catch you and run by you, they're going to keep giving a great effort. And the Citadel felt like they were going to win this football game the whole time. They never quit. And I think that's a, a tribute to the Citadel. But when it came right down to it, Georgia Southern dug deep and found a way to win. And Coach, last week you said after the win over App that the bullseye is back on your back and uh, everyone's shooting at Georgia Southern now at the top of the conference. We're still at the top of the conference after today's performance. Uh, uh, but we know that we're very, it's a tedious top. <laughs> All right, Coach, when we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus the Citadel. Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sundays at 1 with Brady Fossick and Coach Mike Seawalk. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed game trading card and be in the running to win an autographed Georgia Southern game football. Register today. Then watch the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern football with Coach Mike Seawalk on ABC 22.
understand that, you know, if we can execute, you know, stay focused, not get penalties, and we can move the ball down the field just like we did, like, towards the fourth quarter. And when we went in in the halftime, you know, Coach told us not to give up, and everybody went in the locker room, you know. Some people were down, but for the most part, everybody knew that we had a, you know, a fight attitude. Basically, we just stepped up the intensity. The first, they weren't doing anything that we, uh, we hadn't practiced for. They just pulled out a bunch of junk plays, reverses, and things stuff like that, and uh, so the second half, we just basically stepped up the intensity and try to stop them. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Time now for the second half highlights. And coach, we kicked them the ball to open up the second half. But this time, it's the defense that sets the, uh, the tone of the second half with Eric Hadley on third and seven with the big stop. And that forces them a three and out. I think also when you make that statement too, Brady, you got to remember that our kick return team went down there and did a good job on that opening kickoff and pinned them down there. And that was a big, I think that's a big key that we set the tempo and the pace of the game to start with that kickoff cover team. And then Hadley goes and does his thing. Georgia Southern on their first possession of the second half, third and four, a interesting position here. And you pitch to Z and he breaks it open for a big 10 yards and a first down there. And again, Z, Z's always, he's always going to give you everything he's got. We did a good job blocking. Mark Myers did a good job. Of course, I can't tell you enough about Derrick Owens when you watch that tape, you'll see it. And uh, James McCoy did a good job getting up to the next level, not only getting the linebacker level, but getting that robber out of the robber. And that was the guy that was uh, even a thorn in our side all game. And two plays later on second and 13, Chaz, 48-yard touchdown pass to the wide open Kevin Davis for the touchdown. Same play coming back there, same type of play, play action coming downhill. Both those guys feel the robber wasn't going to get beat inside this time, so he was going to make sure he got out there. Sure enough, he went flying by, and when he went flying by, I was just hoping the backside safety he didn't get involved. And he cut the lead to 4, 18-14 with 10.50 left in the third quarter. Citadel takes the kick, but uh, Terrence McBride, great kick coverage at the 15, but Deshaun Jude kicked out of the game after a personal foul on that play, and no, didn't really see what happened there. It was right in front of your sideline, though. It's one of those deals, I, I'll be honest with you, I was making some adjustments, and when I asked Deshaun after the game, it was, you know, it's always going to be the second guy. And, uh, He's not. He's, he's a young kid. He's a sophomore, and what he did is he got himself emotionally involved in the situation. And guy was up there, and you know it's always going to be. Uh, he said, they said, and the next thing you know that uh, they saw the second guy swing, and uh, he got he got himself in trouble. But Citadel answers our opening score in the second half on second and seven. Jeff Klein, 66-yard touchdown pass to Scooter Johnson, but we blocked the extra point, and Citadel now leads 24 to 14. Exactly. I thought that at that point, I really thought that was a big, big, big block because I knew there was a 10 point game now. We'd gotten it back there. We'd kind of, even though we traded touchdowns, we also picked up a point, and I thought that was huge. And, uh, you know, I, I'd expect more out of our secondary. Our secondary expects more to make those plays also. It was one of those situations. I mean, uh, AK was back there. He was in position, and uh, I think there was also a penalty on that. And, uh, we're in a different type of coverage, and they came over to help, but it was just too late. Eagles trail by 10 with 9.57 left in the third. Offense takes back over, but a big play on this drive was on second and four when Chaz gets sacked and loses four yards. Yeah, that was uh, it really was a run. It wasn't really a sack. We were trying to get around the outside. We were trying to change our scheme. We were giving that guy on the edge all kind of looks, and we tried to go ahead and cut him and get around the outside, but we couldn't cut him. Two possessions later on first down from the 24, Chaz Williams, a 59-yard run down to the Citadel 17-yard line, and that was a huge run right there. Absolutely. Come back with the same play we hit earlier in the game. You know, 12 and 13 is our play, and we had to come back over to it. And uh, felt like spread was the best formation for us. It gave our kids a better chance, and they could play with their ears pinned back, and they could just go ahead and, and knock people around. I mean, sometimes the other formations are better by numbers, but the execution is not as sharp because you just don't feel as comfortable coming off the ball. A frustrating day, and it seemed like uh, things just weren't going well when Scott Shell and misses the 31-yard field goal and still down 10 right there. That was disappointing because we're taking it down there and all of a sudden we got ourselves. We also dropped the center quarterback exchange uh, to start that second uh, after we got that long run and uh, try to take it out of his hands for one snap and all of a sudden we get ourselves behind by a dime. But the defense holds strong again and Georgia Southern on their next possession, first down from the 21, Chaz up top, 79-yard touchdown pass to Carl Kearney. Cuts the lead to three and right back in the game though. Well, both our receivers kept saying that the corner kept falling in so fast, coach. He was falling in so fast. I said, I saw it. I, they sent it from a box. We saw it in the first half, but we could never get anything established well enough to say, okay, let's hit this play action now. So we did it on first and 10. We figured we'll just go ahead and give it, give it a shot. And sure enough, uh, we were absolutely right. The Citadel's leads down to 24 21 with 55 seconds left in the third quarter. And they take over uh, some big defensive plays by James Young. He makes the nice play, breaking up the Klein pass. And then on third and seven, he almost picks it. He, breaks up the pass and yep. uh, leads to a fourth down. Absolutely. Um, I thought both of those plays were huge plays. I thought James would have had two picks there. Uh, if we were a little bit lucky, he would. Unfortunately, on fourth and seven, Citadel 
goes for a fake from an unbelievable field position. Sean Grant breaks some tackles, almost dropped the pass in the first place, then takes it all the way down to the 44 to yeah. keep the momentum for them. You know, and Ronnie, he was, he's, he's in good position. He's over there. He's, he's so dis, he just comes over so despondent afterwards. He's going, Coach, I, you know, he apologized at the end of the game for everybody. I said, you know, we got to tackle. we got to be a short tackle, especially mm -hmm. out there in space. And he was right there to answer it. He just couldn't finish it with his feet. Citadel goes all the way down, but on third and five, David Young comes up and lays a big hit to force the fourth down. And that was huge because Georgia Southern blocks another kick and uh, the, the lead stays the same. Absolutely. I thought that again, that was one of those deals where David comes up, sets the tempo with a bang, and all of a sudden I think they went out, came out of their cell just a little bit. They tried a little bit longer field goal than when they would have had to. And when they did, sometimes that kick comes low, and sure enough, we got a chance to get a hand on it. Now for the game winning drive, Georgia Southern's next possession. Chazel started off with a nice pass to Derek Owens for a 23 yard gain. Then two plays later, pitches to Z for five yards. On first down, it's Austin, a nice nine yard run. And then Chaz, this is the big one, the, the keeper that was called back for holding. And that, that, that kind of got things a little more frustrating for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're back out there. They can't even give us a number sometimes. They, they're, they're giving me numbers that we don't even have guys. So, I mean, I, I agree that the, we, we do, some, you know, when our guys are running east and west, and we do get some times where we don't move our feet well enough to stay in front. But at least if you're going to call it, you know, give us a proper number. Huge play of the drive, fourth and two. You go for it, pitch to Mark Myers, and he picks up 12 yards and a huge first down there. Guys practice well. All He has one of the few guys, him and Z. Walton, have practiced hard, and they're going to go ahead and give it. And I figured that that was a good play to give it with his speed. He'd find a seam, and when he did, that was great. And see Z. Walton block on that, and that was awesome. Get it all the way down inside the 10 on third and five. Chaz Williams, five-yard touchdown run, gives Georgia Southern their first lead of the game up 28-24 with five and a half left in the game. Well, that was Chaz again. He saw something and uh, we've been checking the play back in there and he ended up checking his, calling his own number right there on the quarterback sweep and got it in. We we're just hopefully just going to go ahead and run it down there. We knew we were in a position we had points. We we're going to make sure we got points, but uh, uh, we also threw earlier in that game in the first and 10 down there. We threw it down in the corner. We tried to soften him up back here to give us a soft corner. And holding on to that four point lead on third and seven, James Burchette makes the huge play on defense, picks off Jeff Klein's pass after the uh, deflection. You can add a personal foul and Georgia Southern has the ball at their own 46 with under four minutes to play in the game. Yes, exactly. And then we uh, had an opportunity to go ahead and run the clock out and our guys bowed up and they ran the clock out. I mean, that was the type of offense that you're hoping for and really to see James Burchette play hard the whole time and our defense play hard the whole time. When that ball's lying around there, if you could take a play off and not go and go and burst to the hole and make sure people are going to make tackles, that'd be one thing. But our defense didn't. They started rallying to the ball. And when they start rallying the ball, good things happen, and it was evident tonight. Georgia Southern escapes Charleston once again with a 28-24 victory, and uh, you've got to be happy. And when we come back, we'll talk about your thoughts about today's game, plus a preview of next week's game here on Georgia Southern Football 2002. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2002. Coach, team improves to 6-2 and two on the season, 5-1 and one in the Southern Conference, and stays in first place. you got to be happy with the way the team battled back today. I'm happy with the results. I wasn't happy with the, the, the game as it unfolded, but uh, it did show a bunch of character from our kids and, and really our coaches, and everybody had to believe again, and, and uh, I'm proud of that, but I wasn't proud of our effort out here all the time. But we escape with the win. Next up, return home to Paulson Stadium to take on East Tennessee, and I think we all remember what happened last year up at East Tennessee. East Tennessee State's next. Um, you know, it's one of those deals. We've got to have a good week of practice. East Tennessee State uh, is a, a good football team. They've won some football games, and they're very capable. they got one of the best defenses in the, in the conference. And the, after I saw out here what I saw out here today, offensively, we've got to be able to go ahead and, and move the football on anybody. And a little bit of payback, but that's not really the goal next week against East Tennessee. No, the goal was to get better at Georgia Southern. Coach, congratulations on the win today. A tough fought 28-24 win against the Citadel. One more chapter. You got to shake my hand yep. now. One more chapter in Georgia <laughs> Southern Citadel history. I'm glad that one's behind us. <laughs> and we return home next week to Paulson Stadium. We hope to see everybody back in Statesboro next week when Georgia Southern takes on East Tennessee State. For Coach Seawalk, I'm Brady Posick. We'll see you next time on Georgia Southern Football 2002. Georgia Southern Football with Mike Seawalk. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Regional Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Huddle House Restaurants. Any meal, any time, 24 hours a day.